drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered to you by edupedia world previous uh, lectures we discussed about phase diagrams and uh, different kind of phase transformation today we'll be starting a new unit and we'll be discussing about the uh, different kinds of heat treatment that a material can undergo specifically we will discuss about the heat treatments related with steel so let's see what are they uh, as i said there are many different kind of heat treatment processes that a material can undergo this first slide i have uh, jotted down all the major heat treatment processes that there are and uh, that we will discuss as part of this uh, lecture so some of the important ones are st stress relieving stress relieving is basically uh, there is no microstructural change as such but uh, the heat treatment relieves the stress within the material then we have annealing annealing is of multiple types we will discuss full annealing partial annealing subcritical annealing isothermal annealing diffusion process and recrystallization annealing these are the different kind of annealing processes that we will discuss annealing is basically heating a material to a particular temperature holding it there for some time and then cooling it very slowly the cooling is done be, uh, either in the furnace itself known as furnace cooling or under uh, a different environment where the cooling rate will be very low then we have something known as normalizing the schedule is similar that is we heat it keep it at a particular temperature for a certain amount of uh, time then cool it but here the cooling in normalizing the cooling is faster compared to annealing normalizing normally what we do is we cool it in air rather than in the furnace then we have spherodizing this is a special kind of heat treatment that we'll see in which basically we try to convert or rather we convert the cementite in spheroids we convert in it into spheres and that has some advantages we'll see all this in details later then we have hardening hardening is basically uh, converting the sample into martensitic form that is we take the material to high temperature in the austenitic range and then cool it very very rapidly so that we get martensite then we have something known as tempering what happens is during martensitic formation there is a lot of internal stress and the hardness of the martensite is very high thereby the ductility is quite low tempering is a heat treatment process used to restore some of the ductility so that the material is in a more usable state okay then we have what is known as os tempering os tempering is used to convert the microstructure into benetic form okay it's a we'll see the discuss, uh, details later mart tempering is used uh, to form martensite hardening also forms martensite mart tempering also forms martensite but there are basic differences between them between both of them and there are certain advantages associated with uh, one process and the other process and certain disadvantage obviously then we have sub zero treatment sub zero treatment as the name suggests is uh, when we take the specimen to very low temperatures below 0 degree celsius and uh, this is mainly used to convert the leftover retained austenite into martensite so these are the different heat treatment processes which we'll see and i just gave you a brief glimpse about the basic idea behind each of the processes let's begin discussing with stress relieving tre heat treatment process okay before that uh, i'll bring you back to the iron carbon phase diagram 
this is the famous iron carbon phase diagram which i had already shown you beforehand but in this iron carbon phase diagram there are certain lines which are important to be named for the discussion of heat treatment processes we will be using those nomenclature throughout the heat treatment processes so you need to know what are those important lines and what are the names associated with those important lines remember that most of the heat treatment processes which we will discuss or rather all of the heat treatment processes which we will be discussing will be related with steel that is it is less than 2.14% of carbon and the most important uh, region of concern will be this obviously and eutectoid region eutectoid transformation will be one of the important points of uh, discussion so surrounding this region surrounding the eutectoid point there are three lines one is this the 727 degree celsius line which is the eutectoid line this line is named as a1 line okay this is the a1 line eutectoid line or uh, the lowest critical temperature this line which separates austenite and uh, the dual phase ferrite plus austenite region is the a3 line a3 line so for the hyper eutectoid steel scenarios we will be concerned with a1 this line and a3 this line parallel to the a3 line in the hyper eutectoid region we have this line which is termed as acm line okay so for hyper eutectoid steel we will be hearing a1 and a3 often quite often whereas for hyper eutectoid steel we will be hearing a1 and acm quite often now you might be wondering uh, okay we have a1 we have a3 where does a2 stand uh, why do, uh, why is there no line between a1 and a3 as a matter of fact there used to be a line between a1 and a3 which was at uh, around 770 degree celsius which is the curie temperature of the uh, alpha ferrite phase so around here around 770 degree celsius where actually there was no phase change but the magnetic behavior of the material used to change and earlier scientists thought that there was actually a phase change thereby this temperature was termed as a2 later when it was found that it was just change in the magnetic property the phase did not change then this a2 line was removed from the iron carbon phase diagram okay so just to recap a1 is the eutectoid temperature line a3 is the line separating austenite phase and dual austenite plus ferrite phase acm is the line separating austenite phase and the dual austenite plus cementite phase regions okay with this background let us see one of the heat treatments that is the stress relieving heat treatment now the basic idea or the basic purpose of stress relieving heat treatment as the name suggest is to remove internal stresses materials may have internal stresses for uh, many different conditions many different reasons like there might be internal stress development due to fabrication or due to cold rolling so these reasons can provide internal stress and stress relieving helps remove those internal stress now what is the disadvantage if we have internal stress in the body in the presence of st internal stress what happens is that corrosive environment failure can happen uh, non uh, the failure mechanism is known as stress corrosion cracking so basically it's, it is a stress driven corrosion taking place in the material thereby stress should be avoided in order to avoid the failure 
via stress corrosion cracking mechanism then stress basically reduces the fatigue strength internal stresses reduces the fatigue strength so we would like to have a material without internal stresses in addition to that there may be dimensional instability in case of stress being present in the body so these are the reasons we would like to have a body without any internal stress therefore this uh, process of stress relieving which leads to remo removal of inter internal stresses helps us counter these problems now during stress relieving there is no microstructural change which can be observed under a microscope okay now what exactly happens during stress relieving during stress relieving what do we do is that we heat the body which is under st internal stress to a temperature below lower critical temperature just to remind you the lower critical temperature is the a1 temperature or 727 degree celsius line so we heat the body below that temperature and hold it for sufficiently long time so that the internal stresses relieve themselves okay now upon heating the internal stress uh, relieve but if the heating is not uniform or during the cooling we do rapid heat, uh, cooling in such a way that the outer layer cools much more rapid than the inner layers then the process itself can develop internal stresses due to ununiformity of temperature thereby it is of utmost importance that stress relieving in itself or any heat treatment is carried out as far as possible under uniform heating condition uniform heating condition that is the whole body should heat up equally uh, both internally and externally and cool down equally fast okay now what is the extent of stress that is relieved that can be decided or that is decided by how long we expose the body to a given temperature and what is the temperature that we are exposing the body to so higher the temperature we expose the body to stress can be relieved faster if you want to expose the body to lower temperature for whatever reason then we need to pro provide it larger time for stress to relieve okay so today i introduced you to the different kind of heat treatments that we will be discussing under this chapter and uh, we saw the different lines uh, important lines in the iron carbon phase diagram that is uh, required for the discussion and finally i introduced you uh, and discussed about the concept of stress relieving with this i will close today's lecture next lecture we will discuss about some of the annealing processes till then have a great day goodbye